Hello and welcome to Gift and Happy New Year. Uh, I, I hope uh, this year has been going reasonably well for you. Please know that, that Seth and myself have been continuing to uh, pray for you guys, although we've been apart. Um, and I um, would like to begin this video in, in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord Jesus, we ask you to just bless uh, everyone watching this video right now. Um, please, Lord, just send out your Spirit to them in, in, in power, and fill their hearts with hope and faith and love make this a year for everyone of our of uh in our parish family a, a prosperous year a successful year a year filled with joy and a year filled with peace we ask you lord to just be present to us even as we we spend so much time apart and please, Lord, just fill our hearts with your light and help us to, to discover and to know what your will truly is for each and every one of us. And give us the, the grace, Lord. Give us uh, your spirit to help us live out that life according to your will and the will of God the Father. And we ask this all in your name, Lord Jesus, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alrighty, so uh, for this video, I'd like to talk about the last four petitions of the, the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. Now, the Lord's Prayer given to us by Jesus himself, so he came up with this prayer. Um, the, Lord, the Lord's Prayer consists of seven petitions. And much like the Ten Commandments, the, the, the first three uh, have to do directly with with God. Um, so it's us petitioning God to to manifest him, his, his self, his kingdom, his holiness, and his will in our lives. But the, the last four, uh, the, the second half of the Lord's Prayer, is all about asking God to to help us in our everyday lives. And let us begin with the uh, the line, Give us this day our daily bread. Sounds kind of like mysterious, our daily bread. Um, what does that mean exactly? Well, when we pray, give us this day our daily bread, we are asking on one hand for all of our needs to be met. You know, um, as human beings, we have a lot of uh, physical needs. So, I mean, we need to eat don't we? We need to sleep. We need to um, uh, have clothes, have shelter. And sometimes, too, living in the world, uh, those worldly concerns can, can sometimes haunt us. So we are asking, on one hand, for the Lord to just continue to provide us with things that we need um, on, a, on a daily basis uh, to, to help with our physical needs. On the other hand, we as human beings, we're not just matter, we're not just just flesh and blood and bone. We are also made of spirit, you know, so we also have spiritual needs. And so we are asking for um, our spiritual needs to be met, uh, more faith, right? More hope and, and more capacity to love in our everyday lives. And so... When we pray, give us the, uh, this day our daily bread, we're asking for that which nourishes us to, to uh, help us and to supply us with all of our needs, both, uh, both physical and, and uh, spiritual. Now, there is another aspect of praying that prayer. And it, you know, for us as Catholics, it, it's quite evident that we're actually talking about the Eucharist. The Eucharist is the body and blood of Jesus, which we receive at Mass. And Jesus' body, as he tells us in the Gospels, is, is true food. And his blood is true drink. And just like any uh, good and earthly um, uh, food or drink that we, you know, eat or, or uh, imbibe here on earth, we are nourished in our physical bodies from that. But 
because Jesus is who he is, he also nourishes our, our, our spirits as well. So when we are asking, give us this day our daily bread, we are asking for, for, uh, 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 for to be nourished by the Eucharist. You know, I, I, uh, a year or two ago, ah, man, time is so weird now, but I, I remember Father Mark in uh, the course of a series of homilies, he was, he was um, uh, exploring John chapter 6, uh, which is the bread of life discourses. Um, if you haven't uh, opened up your Bible and looked at John chapter 6, I highly recommend that you do. Because that's where, where, where Jesus tells all of his disciples about the Eucharist and what we, we can expect from, from the Eucharist. Um, and so uh, I remember Father Mark really encouraged us to pray for a, uh, a greater hunger for the Eucharist, uh, to really desire that. But it's funny, too, because in the Lord's Prayer itself, in the Our Father, we are praying exactly for that. You know, we're expressing a hunger for the Eucharist. Give us this day our daily bread, that bread that came down from heaven and, and gives us uh, a, a taste of eternal life. So that's uh, the first petition. That's the, uh, or the fourth petition, actually. But the first petition um, pertaining to our, our needs here on earth. So give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's the, the fifth petition. Trespassing. What, what is that? Well, you know, we all have seen those signs, no trespassing. So what exactly does that mean for us? Well, to trespass is to basically do something wrong, right? To, to, um, to sin, to err, to make mistakes, to miss the mark. So we're asking for, for forgiveness for the things that we have done, but in the second part of the petition, as we forgive those who trespass against us, we are also kind of reminding ourselves and challenging ourselves that in order to be truly forgiven for the things wrong that we have done, we must always, always seek to forgive others for the things wrong that they do to us, right? This, uh, this message of forgiveness is central to the Christian gospel. Jesus talked about forgiveness all the time. You know, um, you might remember in the gospels when Peter goes up to Jesus and says, uh, Jesus, how many times must I forgive my brother? Seven times? And I, I think Peter might be uh, thinking, saying seven times might be giving a, uh, a really good, awesome answer you know like perhaps one to two to three times would have been enough but seven yeah that that would be a good one right jesus seven times but you know what jesus responds to peter he goes no no peter not seven seventy seventy times seven so in a sense uh P jesus might have been telling peter in infinity times infinity to the infinite power that's how many times you ought to forgive anyone who's wronged you, who comes to you asking for forgiveness. And you know what, we can always look at um, uh, the image of our Lord crucified on the cross and remember the, the, the words he cried out himself to the Father as, uh, as these Romans were, were mercilessly executing him in the most excruciatingly way possible. By, by nailing him to uh, a piece of wood and hanging him up on a cross. And Jesus cried out in that moment to, to his father, saying, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Now Jesus, being the Son of God, had every right to look each of those men in the eyes and say to them, Do you know what you're doing you are, are sinning against God and against man. But no, instead, 
instead of seeking that that kind of retribution or that justice in the moment that he sure had the right to him being the son of God. He did not look at them. Instead, he looked up to his father and asked for their forgiveness and acknowledged their ignorance. And so we too, as Christians, as followers of Christ, are called not to seek justice so much as to be, be willing to, to give mercy in any situation. You know, God the Father is willing to, to be merciful to us no matter what wrong we, we commit in our lives. And so this, this line in the Our Father, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, we are also reminding ourselves that as Christians, we are called to be merciful in every circumstance, just as God the Father is so merciful to us and has given us the, the, the great sacrament of reconciliation, so must we also seek to forgive and to reconcile with our brothers and sisters in this world who do us wrong, right? So that's the second petition of the, uh, the second, the second of the last four, the fifth. Ugh. All right. So, and lead us not into temptation. That's the, 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 the sixth um, petition of the Our Father. Lead us not into temptation. What is temptation? Well, temptation is the feeling that we get in our hearts or that we hear in our ears. You know, we often see those, uh, those cartoons of a little devil sitting on your shoulder and whispering in your ear. But the feeling or the, the, the little voice in our ear that, that, that tries to convince us to do something that we know is wrong. And so... We are asking God the Father to, to give us the strength and the fortitude and also the, the, the knowledge and the courage to say no to that temptation whenever it comes up. And we as human beings, especially as human beings who are striving to be holy, are, are susceptible to every kind of temptation. And I, I think when we pray, lead us not into temptation. We're asking him to, to protect us and, and, and lead us away from that temptation. You know, give us um, the, the, the graces and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Like I, I mentioned a few of them before, like knowledge, wisdom, understanding, fortitude, right judgment, counsel, right? And... Um, so, so when we are, are praying that line, you know, lead us not into temptation, we are asking the Lord, the, the God, the Father, to, to invigorate us with the gifts of the Holy Spirit so that we can cooperate in our own uh, path to holiness by, by allowing the Holy Spirit to, to really work in our lives and, and lead us through these, these really troublesome waters where we're getting tempted on all different sides and all, all kinds of ways. So lead us not into temptation, the sixth petition, but deliver us from evil, the seventh petition. Deliver us from evil. Save us from the things that are seeking to not just end our lives or just send us uh, worldly evil like sickness, death, um, you know, also, um, you know, betrayal. Um, but we're also asking for God to save us, to deliver us from, from the things in our life which can lead to spiritual death. Deliver us from evil. And, you know, we are so vulnerable as human beings that we need 
to constantly pray to God for that. You know, because we cannot save ourselves from, from spiritual death. In fact, because we sin, spiritual death is the natural consequence to sin. If you have sinned, and I'm sure you have, you know, what you deserve in a natural sense is, is, is spiritual death. But we believe in a gospel. We believe in the good news that even though we do sin, we do mess up, we do make mistakes, that we have an advocate in the Holy Spirit to help us through, you know, our, 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 the, the temptations and the evils that we encounter in our lives. And, and we have a Savior in, in Jesus Christ who, who died for our sins on the cross. And so when we pray deliver us from evil. We are, are calling both upon the Holy Spirit and, and remembering the sacrifice that, that Jesus made for us on the cross in order to continue, continue living uh, lives which are striving for holiness and which we hope uh, are, are uh, destined for heaven, right? Right? Um, lastly, I, I want to um, talk about the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, we as Christians, we're, we're unlike any other religion in the fact that we believe in uh, three persons in one God. No other religion believes in that. In fact, it doesn't make sense to, to most religions who hear that. It's like, well, how does that work? Well, it is a mystery, but it's central to our faith. And so... The Lord's Prayer is very interesting in that it is um, a very Trinitarian prayer. Um, it was given to us by, by Jesus. So like I said at the beginning of this video, it's his prayer. He, he wrote it, in a sense. Um, he came up with it. He gave it to us to pray with him to God the Father. So, so there's Jesus, the, 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 the giver of the prayer, and then it's... Um, it's directed solely to God the Father. But the Holy Spirit it exists in between the lines, right, of, of the prayer. And if we read in between the lines, we can see the Holy Spirit permeating throughout it. Um, you know, even the, the opening line, Our Father. Uh, St. Paul tells us in the letter to the Galatians that it is only by the Spirit in which we can say those words, Father, right? Abba, as adopted sons and daughters of God the Father. So we can only say Father by the, the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Um, and I, I talked a lot about the Eucharist uh, in this video, but uh, give us this day our daily bread. Um, it is only by the, Euch uh, by the Holy Spirit uh, where we're, uh, the, like if you remember at the Mass during the consecration where Father places his hands over the gifts of bread and wine and calls for the Spirit to, to come down upon these gifts like the dewfall, making them into the, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it is only by the Holy Spirit in which we actually receive the daily bread and what that we truly need and 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 yearn for um, and also too like when we think of uh, forgiving um, uh, our trespass um, forgiving our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us Sometimes it seems absolutely impossible for us to forgive certain people who've done tremendous wrong to us. It's like, how could I possibly find it in my heart to, to forgive uh, someone who's betrayed me, right? Someone who's uh, consistently let me down. Someone who my heart has turned against. Well, when we pray... Acknowledging that, that, that God has commanded us to, to forgive, to seek to forgive always, you know, 70 times 7. We are asking for the Holy Spirit to, to turn our hearts around 
and to, to seek those moments of, of forgiveness, to give us the ability to, to forgive in our hearts. And sometimes if we have the opportunity in our words to the other person. So the Holy Spirit, although, although uh, the Our Father is, is said by the Son to the Father, the Holy Spirit is the, the, the words and the love and the intention which moves between the Father and the Son. And that's been a very classical way of understanding who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is the eternal love which flows between the Father and the Son. And we see that made manifest, although very subtly, in, in, uh, in, in the, the, the words of the Our Father. And so, although the Our Father is a perfect prayer, and we are called to, to pray it, let us remember, too, that that, that flow of the Spirit, you know, when we unite our words with Jesus and our intentions with Jesus to, to give our lives as a sacrifice to God the Father, it is the Spirit which, which compels us to do that and helps enable us to, to live as, as uh, living sacrifices for the sake of the kingdom of God. I'd like to end with uh, praying the Our Father with you. But I would like to uh, pray it in a way that you probably have never prayed it before. Um, I want you to, to close your eyes in a second. And when we pray, we're going to pray it very slowly. But I want you to pray it as if you are hearing Jesus himself uttering the words along with you. So as you pray this, and, and um, you know, if you're watching this at home, you can pray it out loud, or if you don't feel comfortable, just whisper it. Whisper the prayer. And, and imagine you're praying along with, with Jesus and trying to, to match his intention of his voice, but also the intention of your heart. You know, turn your heart to God the Father, the, the person to whom we're directing this prayer. You know, almost imagine Jesus standing maybe beside you, looking up toward God. You know, and imagine his heart, what's happening in his heart, and allow the Holy Spirit to, to recreate what's happening in Jesus' heart as he prays this very intense and special prayer to, to replicate itself in your own heart and allow the Holy Spirit, too, to like offer this prayer together up to God the Father. You know, kind of like imagine plumes of incense rising at Mass. Shall we try this out? All right, so let's just take a moment to close our eyes and pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, God bless you all, and I hope you uh, are having a great winter and a happy 2021, and we'll see you in February. Bye.